What's going on, everybody? It's Noah Beanick from the College Baseball Experience. And, hey, I mean, we just saw, I'm going to call it the Starkville stare down uh, Saturday night between Mississippi State and Georgia. Just absolute mayhem. Um, and honestly, if it was in the MLB, uh, this would be like one of the first topics they talk about on Sports Center. However, uh, the national media hasn't really caught on to college baseball in the regular season yet. Uh, they did a little bit better uh, with the postseason last year. However, uh, I feel like I can do something like a John Boy media thing and just kind of react to what's happened. Uh, I'm not going to worry about a copyright strike. You know what? I'm not going to make any money on this. So let's let's just go over. Uh, you know, I only have a, a couple of camera angles, a couple of highlights. Um, and then we'll go through the press conference that Chris Lomonas, the head coach of Mississippi State, did. Uh, and I'll just kind of talk my way through kind of my thoughts. And uh, let me know if you guys like this kind of content and would watch more of it. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into first uh, the play, I think. I, I think I want to do the play first, and then I'll do the press conference I have some notes here next to me. That's what I'm going to be looking down at uh, for some of it. But let's do the play first. All right, so here we go. I'm hoping my connection's good. You know, if it's not, uh, I can only blame my house with shitty Wi-Fi. So let's let's do this. Um, I've pulled up the clip from ESPN on YouTube, and we're gonna we're gonna run through this here. That one is shot out in the gap and right. Picked up on to get the out at home. Second of all, bad send. Now we get to the play at home here, the collision. And we have Johnny Long standing over him, kind of, I don't know. I don't know if it was on purpose, kind of walked into him. Looks like a knee to the ribs here. <clears throat> Mayhem ensues. Dakota Jordan Tall. Tosses his glove, runs in here, doesn't do anything. He's one of the guys that got tossed here. Now, as they start to do some of the replays, this is what the notes were for. So I counted nine notable missing starters in the eighth and ninth inning, the bottom of the eighth and the entire ninth inning here. All right, so we had Georgia. For Fernando Gonzalez, their catcher, he's number 13. So, again, this is just for people that are going to go back and look at the replay. You can specifically, I mean, I've done it a couple times, just to look at a couple of players that you want to zone in on and see what in the world they even got ejected for. Um, the rule uh, in the SEC right now uh, is that if you leave your position in the field or if you leave the dugout, uh, you get ejected in a play or a situation like this. Uh, the tough part here is this was the third out from Mississippi State in the inning, so all of the fielders uh, left their position, and both dugouts did pretty much completely clear. So um, most of the guys that are riding pine are wearing, you know, parkas, jackets, staying warm. Uh, it was ten at night. Uh, I was I was doing multiple screen monitor monitoring uh, multiple screens here with the March Madness game. Uh, the final four game between UConn and Alabama was down to the wire while uh, the shit went down here with Mississippi State. Um, so, yes, Fernando Gonzalez, Georgia's catcher, number 13. Also, Slate Alford, the second baseman for Georgia, number 44. Notable because he used to play for Mississippi State there. Um, Georgia's Trey Phelps, he's a right fielder, number 36. And then there were uh, six guys from Mississippi State that I counted. The notable ones here, Dakota Jordan, the right fielder, number 42, like I mentioned uh, just off the top of my head. You know, him throwing the glove and getting in there, but he really didn't do anything. He didn't even open his mouth in one of the replays. Hunter Hines, first baseman, number 44. Uh, another notable one there. Um, and then also Mississippi State's Bryce Chance. He's the left fielder, number 38. Amani Larry, second baseman, number eight. He's the one that threw the pretty good relay throw then into home there. Uh, the catcher, Johnny Long, uh, number 18. And then uh, the last one that I have written down is Logan Kohler, the third baseman, number 40. So, uh, you know, just keep an eye on any of those guys that you want to zone in on for the replays upcoming. Um, just know that there is an appeal process that's underway. Um, they're going to try to, you know, the coaches are going to try to get the SC office to reverse some suspensions on the ejected players. Um, however, not sure 
how quick that process is going to be. Um, they also came out and said that all ejected players will be announced Sunday morning and they will be suspended for the series finale, which begins at two Eastern. So let's jump into the rest of the play. This team to get back to the dugout. Not sure what that was all about, but the throw was there in plenty of time. I'll use my mouse kind of pointing out different things too, uh, I guess, since you can sure see the mouse. Quickly. I mean, from, <laughs> All right, here's the replay. To me, Chris Burke says it's completely and normal tag play. Know about it. I will say I at full speed, I mean, uh, oh, and then uh, Carter did kind of go in pretty hard. Like um, did not try to create contact, though. Did. The thing he here is Johnny Long is completely blocking the plate. Um, that's not against the rules. Nobody the rules that did change hard. just recently, right. um, like, where you, uh, so he's completely after. blocking the baseline here. Um, now he does have the ball well before the runner is at the plate. And that by rule is not, um, you know, fielder interference. I forget what the technicality, what the rule is actually called. I, catcher interference. That's, uh, hitting either way. Um, college baseball player can't remember all the different rules names but i do know most of the rules they're they're in my head somewhere so anyways he's going to get contact if he's blocking this he cannot be this pissed about the contact that is made he's diving five six feet away from home plate you are asking for contact um the forearm did pretty get good. twisted pretty good Fantastic right in there uh, the for johnny long however for all this extracurricular that's a, that's activity at the end of it is uncalled for. Yeah, he's uh, he's in my what? Here's Hines. Yeah, I mean, uh, he got ejected. On, I don't know what he did. I mean, like he's he's in here trying to just you know that just excessive stop me. I mean, I long from I don't, doing anything else. I don't know if there's history he, there. That slow we don't motion. Know about, like but, this play was pretty fast. You know, he it, it was heated. Out. It was a big he moment. Third out of the, the inning. The so like, it's a slow motion. You're going to see Johnny Long's knee go into Carter. I, I'm going to stop with the cursor. That there, way, the red bar goes away. Shot oh. of things to see what exactly All right, that was the live. That was the live speed. That was fast. I mean, in the moment. I'm not sure that Long even knows that his knee is pushing up against him. Yeah, I'm going to give him that. Um, now, this is the you know the bench's tag. clearing part. Here's Hines not doing anything. Um, I know a lot yeah, of people Gonzalez are going to be caring about what he does. So and Dakota Jordan pitches. comes running in here at the top at the end, doesn't five, say anything, six, doesn't do seven, anything. Eight, nine, he got ejected. Georgia, I don't know how course, Jordan State gets ejected in this mess. Uh, Slate Alford well, is right here, really I believe. I only can so tell that because numbers. of the long hair. So I can't make out his number there at the end. And that's the end of the clip. I do have another clip here from Stephen Shock that I'm going to pull up in a second. All right, so here's the slow mo angle of the knee that I was talking about. Probably deserved it. There was going to be any ejections. He's number one, in my opinion. Um, however, I'm kind of giving him a little bit of a pass for the legs, the lower body bumping into Carter here, as you'll see uh, coming up. Right there, everything's cool. Like it's all good, right? And even even there, but like now it gets, you know. And I guess they can review the right in here. here. Like he's honestly probably trying to say some other shit talk while walking to his dugout because it's all one motion. It's very very slow motion in this replay. Um, that's that's the good and bad things about replay, and also you can hear the uh, you know, the narration over the background. Shout out to Dave Neal and Chris Burke, who had to kind of wing the last half and in uh, inning and a half. Um, as they, along with the viewers of the uh game, were just kind of figuring out which players were tossed, which were not, and also. Uh, all the de defensive substitutions. I mean, there was a the left fielder for Georgia was playing second base. He made an error, which then allowed Mississippi State to get a runner on base. Um, Mississippi State had two pitchers in the left uh, in the outfield. Cal Steven, the Friday night starter, was playing left field. Luke Dotson, the right fielder, uh, was you know he he was another pitcher playing right field. Um, ideally, um. You know, I'll, I'll save it actually for the press conference because I have a whole number another point on that. But 
<clears throat> Berkey had mentioned, you know, that's that's the reason why you're shagging the fly balls in batting practice uh, pitchers <laughs> uh, for, for moments like that. So I counted seven pinch hit appearances. I had nine notable missing starters in the uh, bottom of the eighth and the ninth inning there. Uh, so obviously I'm missing uh, somebody uh, or two uh, substitutions there, and we're going to find those out uh, Sunday morning. Uh, now let's get into the press conference. All right, so here's our press conference with head coach Chris Lamonis from Mississippi State. Uh, obviously, he's displeased, <laughs> uh, not happy about definitely losing the game, but also just uh, there was a 40-minute delay during all of this as well. Uh, so you can imagine that uh, he's not very chippy. However, I do give him credit. He was an answering questions to the best of his ability. You can tell that he honestly doesn't know all the details as well. So let's go. All right, Coach, I guess the obvious question is, and I'm going to be careful how I ask this because I don't want you to offer any opinions on officiating, but what exactly was the decision and the, the rules behind that decision? Steve, we still don't know. Like, I, I'm talking, and our crew here was great, so I, I'm not the – Ray, I mean, they're literally almost apologizing to us as this is going on, um, but that's, that's bad. That's not the interpretation of the rule. If it's an interpretation of the rule, then – Everybody should have been thrown out. It should have been a forfeit. But it was who came out of the dugout that we could identify, who didn't have a hoodie on, who my team was on the field. He's totally correct. All the way up into this point, uh, I have nothing against this response. Uh, the the hoodies, the, the parkas over the top of the jerseys, that's the only way that a lot of these officials – uh, could even tell what play who which players are who and which ones they should eject. Um, Mississippi State having being just on the field, a lot of their players are now running back to the dugout and are easy, easily identifiable. So that's why you got more, uh, you know, players for MSU that have been suspended rather than Georgia players. My team is literally on the field. What are they supposed to do? Not one of those kids that got kicked out was aggressive. No, I'll say Johnny Long was aggressive, <laughs> right? I mean, he's the catcher. He was the one that instigated all of this mess. They didn't come in aggressive. Nobody started a fight. They were on the field. They're coming off the field to congratulate their teammate, and my entire lineup gets taken out. That's that's what we're teaching kids. I mean, somebody who interpreted the rule, that, that's interpreted the wrong way. Because I know, I mean, on both sides, like, everybody came out of the dugout. If that game went on national TV, it's probably two warnings and we're still playing baseball. So this is an interesting point by him. And it obviously irks him that the game he's his point is that the game was being nationally televised, which means there was more eyes on it. Ironically, during March Madness in the final four, I don't know if it really got as many eyes as he thinks. You know, uh, contrary to that whole point, uh, the second thing here is that he kind of gets into, he got into it a little bit and he's going to get into it more. The people that makes the decisions in his words uh, were not the umpires on the field. One, uh, it was SEC office or NCAA, whoever was dictating the second review because this was this was reviewed two or three times. Um, and the second one was a half hour long. The umpires are taking out notepads and writing down notes. They're obviously hearing something in their ear somebody else is talking to them in some kind of office, whether it's the NCAA, because I know during the College World Series, they always take their reviews to Pittsburgh. I don't know why, um, but I went to college in Pittsburgh. Um, that's where I played my college ball. For some reason, that's just in the back of my mind. I know that. So Pittsburgh is the one that decides a lot of the NCAA stuff. It sounds like the SEC offices took a lot, took care of a lot of the review here. My thought when I'm thinking NCAA office is Cam Canarella. Uh, last postseason, Clemson against Tennessee, all of a sudden, umpire ejects Cam Canarella when he was talking shit to, I think it was Zane Denton of Tennessee. No warning, no nothing. He ejects Canarella. So why couldn't we just eject long and get this thing over with? That's my thought there. So let's let's keep going with the press conference. And it's just not, it, it's not acceptable. And, and for somebody to make the outcome of a game from somewhere else, uh, I don't. I know those umpires that were here tonight wouldn't have made that decision. I promise you that. That wouldn't have happened if if it was run from here. But it's it's other people trying to make decisions, and we're going to make a statement because it was a national TV game, 
And uh, that, that's poor right there, very poor. Steve, following up on that too, uh, like Hunter Hines is playing peacemaker in that situation. As you mentioned, if you're on the field, you can't leave the bench. And and so did they offer any clarity no, about we, that? We get nothing. That's what's bad. It's, it's all coming from somewhere else by two or three people. And I don't, I don't understand how, like I said, I thought my guys were safe because I kept telling the umpires there, hey, my guys are on the field. And they go, Chris, we know. Your guys aren't on the field. They can't, you can't leave the dugout. Like, so I'm feeling that whole as we wait and wait forever to make a decision. I can understand if the catcher and the, the guy who ran in, who had the altercation, got out, and then we could move on. But what we did tonight is we not only affected tonight, but you could possibly affect other games um, on 27-man rosters. Which she's right. I don't think I've stated it yet, but each position player that has been ejected from this game is also going to be suspended for Sunday's game. Each pitcher that was ejected, uh, the rule is four games. So like, if you're ejected as a pitcher from a game, you're suspended four games. Uh, the next four, the immediate next four. We'll get into uh, the upcoming schedule for both teams in a little bit. Like, we did that? Like, it doesn't make any sense, and I'm really, like I said, I probably need to shut up because I'll get in trouble for what I say. But that's that's poor. It put it put kids in positions they shouldn't be putting them in. It put kids in, you know, some guys never hit. What if they get hit or something? I mean, we're we're making. I mean, it just it's just poor. So he makes this point again in another moment of the press conference. In my opinion, as a ball player, talking about ball players, you're an athlete. The pitchers are dying to hit. He's talking about pitchers hitting. He's also talking pitchers fielding or uh, another fielder fielding a position that he's not comfortable in. I don't know if it happened to Georgia um, or even Mississippi State for that matter. Uh, I don't know if backup catchers were you know kicked out of the game as well, but Georgia had a new catcher for sure, and there was a pass ball or uh, – you know, just a, a missed block. I forget what exactly it was watching the ninth inning there or the bottom of the eighth, either or. Um, that would be the only position, in my opinion, because it wasn't like a position player was pitching and the pitchers are always dying to hit. So <laughs> I'd take that from a PO. We will pick up a bat and go up to the plate whenever we're told and there will be excitement. <laughs> or it's or it's fear because we've never seen a pitch in the last year, um, but also it's excitement, like just the, just the nerves. <laughs> they're they're flowing through because you want to do something. Cal Steven with the uh, with the tying run on, and he was the winning run in the ninth inning, two outs. You know, pitchers dream of that shit. I forget the 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 kid for LSU, Peterson, uh, whatever his first name was, drills the ball off the left field wall, um, and he says that he had never taken a college at bat before and somehow Maneri had no idea. (laughs) I don't know how that happens, but uh, you know, us pitchers, we dream for that. So I I don't want to hear any of that from Lamonis here. Um, So you try to, this is hilarious. That's, that's the other thing. He goes, you try to get me fired. (laughs) He's being funny, but also, I mean, this is a coach under the gun. They just lost an SEC game because of all of this. He had a couple of starters ejected, and he loses a 2-2 game in the bottom of the eighth when his team's going up to hit. This is a guy that is under a ton of pressure. And this game was, and probably in his viewpoint, taken away from him because he had the top of the order coming up. I think he's about to say that, too. Communication with the league or anything of that nature about tomorrow's game. When do you expect to have those conversations and perhaps some answers? I, I, I mean, Steve, I haven't even seen the play. You know, like that's I'm still like processing, finishing a game, trying to figure out a lineup uh, just to finish that. So um, that'll be when I leave here. We'll start to put that together and, and work on it there. But um, you know, hopefully the, we'll, we'll make some sense. We'll slow down. Say, hey, that wasn't right appeal it or whatever we have to do and look up and let's let the two teams play baseball. We work all year long. We're 13,000 people there. It's an intense moment. It's a huge play. Hey, I get, we have a little tussle, but like I had one, not one kid, not one of my guys was aggressive in that. Not one guy was aggressive. Nope, not one guy was trying to start a fight. Johnny Long was again. I'm just offering input. 
you know, your your catcher started the whole thing. But great press conference, other than the couple of times he just didn't mention Lawn. In that everybody's coming off the field excited, and because we're all standing around and we didn't just stand in our spot, which is <laughs> nobody is doing, both teams came out of dugout. Like I said, both teams. But if they didn't see your number, they couldn't pick you. Preach. Well, then, I'm sorry. Then that's just objective. You're just you're just picking and choosing what you want to do, and um, that that's really poor. I, I don't even know. I'd like to know who made the decisions. That's what I'd like to know. I, I and I still got to find that out. Danny P. Great ball game. It's two two in the eighth. We make a great play. We had just had a good inning against their guy. We're coming in. Um, I feel like we're, we're about to put a good inning together. We had the top of our lineup. Um, Monty makes a great throw on that play. I thought it was a really nice play. Um, but, you know, I, I can't fault the effort of our kids. And I, I can't even come in and yell at them. This is a great point. But what, what they just did, that, it doesn't make any sense. Like, what, what do you expect them to do? They're on the field. And my whole team got thrown out because they were on the field and they – they're running into – I mean, that's the entrance of my dugout. And they're doing – they're peacemaking. They're not fighting. They're not pushing. They're not yelling. There was none of that going on. But, hey, if you leave your dugout – like, I, I understood if you threw a couple of my guys out in my dugout that came out of my dugout. But my team that was on the field I, – I, I, I need to finish this. I'm sorry. I'm probably saying too much. But um, that was poor, you know. And I know they had a ton of kids, but they don't – you know, a couple here and there – you're telling me some of their guys are sat in the dugout? I don't believe that. I just don't think they could see. Neither do I. And so we just made the subjective thing of what the TV or whatever would show me. So um, really poor. I'm, I'm really I'm really pissed because we're in the fight of the SEC race and what's happening in between the lines for the student athletes, you don't get to see because of some silly rule and then we're just going to subjectively pick and choose what we want to do and what we want to – what we want to um, – enforce and i think it's poor all right so that was the press conference uh little uh interview you know lamonis answering a couple questions and then it cuts off i don't know if there's anything else after that however uh twitter was a hilarious space to be in um me i'm a neutral fan um kind of you know i'm, I'm a michigan baseball fan so the last thing that I wanted to do or hit on here is a little bit of a rant from myself. Uh, usually we do Friday show or Thursday night shows for Friday's college baseball games. And typically I am covering the betting side of college baseball. I mean, I felt like the college baseball experience, we needed a niche to kind of hammer into um, the college baseball space and nobody was covering college baseball gambling. So we filled in. Thursday nights has been our best downloaded show every single week. So that's the show that we hammer home and there were no betting odds Thursday night for Friday's games. Pissed me off a shitload. I even stayed up till six in the morning to even think about doing a, a morning show to get a show out there still for people's morning drive to work on Friday night or on Friday morning. I mean, so this is a little bit of a rant for myself. I wanted to put it out there because um, I think it's asinine. So th this picture that I have here, Georgia, Mississippi State for Sunday's game is listed. Mississippi State's minus 160, Georgia's plus 124. Crazy with this whole situation that went down. Um, I think it's asinine that a book, and I, I didn't reference them directly, but it is DraftKings um, listed a line for the shit show of a game because – I mean, if they were able to put out a, a line for a game that we have no idea who's playing in, then you were able to put out a line for the matchup on Friday on Thursday uh, night for us to be able to do some content on it. I mean, like for crying out loud, every other sport has overnight lines. Why didn't college baseball get them for this Thursday night? And it's not just DraftKings. They've been the only ones that have been doing the overnight lines Thursday night to Friday. Every other book is too shy afraid to get hammered overnight on a market that they don't have people paying attention to directly all the time, I guess they just pretty much take the, they pretty much carbon copy uh, DraftKings odds and they just take a little bit more uh, a VIG on it uh, with a little bit more hold. And I think it's BS. Um, 
but yeah, DraftKings gets the blow in in this tweet directly. However, I I don't have nearly as many issues with DraftKings as I do other books. Um, and I say for context, Georgia and Mississippi State had a boatload of players ejected today, and they will be suspended for tomorrow's game. Um, please continue to put out overnight lines. However, don't void this because I mean I bet you they will void it. Um, you know I I don't think either team had a projected Sunday starter, but like if they find out that they could easily use Dakota Jordan and Hunter Hines didn't play. Those were valuable players that we didn't know about. So then they have, I don't even know if it's the right, but uh, they just void it because notable players didn't play in the game uh, after it starts. They offered it. Um, it's your fuck up, not ours. You should honor it, in my opinion. And then I go, this was a half joke um at the end here for those that read this entire thing i'd like to offer my thanks by saying that i'll be betting on georgia plus 124 how the fuck could be a, a team be favored by minus 160 after tonight's mess it's incredibly dumb um so yeah that's the segment there you know if you liked this kind of content let me know um by hitting me up on twitter that's the number one spot to uh to get in touch with me noah b77 underscore is my tag there um also click like on the video if you like it uh subscribe to the college experience we cover college football year-round college basketball is going to be year-round coverage now and college baseball is going to get a lot more attention from me personally and also our team as we go throughout the road to omaha so if you like this kind of coverage let me know i will do more of these videos if uh, the demand is there um but i just didn't think that this whole mess had gotten the news coverage that it, i think it deserves and needs too because i mean i feel like some people don't even know who was ejected from this game so like i said that's gonna do it uh thank you for tuning in adios amigos